Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to answer question number three from the October 2023 International A Level Pure Mathematics paper or paper two, paper one, pure one paper. And this question here is about third form. So it says, in this question, you must show all stages of your working. Solutions relying on calculator technology are not acceptable. So you have to show every step of the work, okay, because you could just put this in your calculator and the correct answer will come out exactly in the right form. And, you know, if you just wrote that down, you will get zero marks for this, all right? So you must be able to show that you know the principles behind how to rewrite this in a form such as that in order for you to get the marks, okay? You can't just, uh, you know, just write down the answer. Now, I would suggest you do check to see if you've got the right answer in the end. Check to see, you know, check your calculator by using the calculator once you've answered the question or even before you start if you want to. And just make sure that, you know, your answer is correct at the end in case you made a silly mistake. There's no problem with doing that. But the problem is in, in showing no steps whatsoever, especially the important steps. Now, first of all, um, we have something in what's called third form where you have third form means when you've got these square roots everywhere, right? Now, the problem with this um, expression is the, the square root signs in the denominator, okay? The denominator is not made up of a rational number. There's irrational numbers in the denominator. So for us to write this in simplest form, we have to rationalize the denominator. So this question could have just say, said simplify this fraction means you have to write it without any square roots in the denominator. You have to rationalize the denominator, okay? So we have to understand what that means. Rationalizing the denominator is writing it so there's no square roots in the denominator. Now, there's two kind of, um, what's the word? There's two scenarios. One of them, for example, if you had something like, like say, 2 divided by root 5, okay? This is something which is not simplified in simplest form because the denominator is made up of a something in third form. You want to get rid of this denominator in third form. You want to write it so that it becomes rational. Now we have a fraction. You can't just, you know, change the value of the fraction. All right. This, whatever you do to it must be made, it must be equal to what comes after the equal sign. You must change it in such a way that it doesn't change its value. So just like when you have something like, for example, um, 1 over 2, and you want to express it with a denominator of 6. You know that you have to multiply 2 by 3 to make it 6, so you have to also multiply the numerator by the same thing. That way, they are equivalent fractions. Similarly, you have to change this in such a way that the numerator and the denominator are multiplied by the same amount, such that what comes after it is an equivalent fraction that is equal to that thing. Now, how do we get rid of root 5? Well, we multiply by root 5. Okay, you multiply it by root 5, and if you multiply it by root 5, the denominator, you must multiply the numerator by root 5 as well. Okay, you must multiply the numerator by root 5 as well, so you end up with 2 root 5 over, now root 5 times root 5 gives you 5. Now we have this in its simplest form, why? Because the denominator is now a rational number. It's, and then we have rationalized the denominator, and we have now written in this form. Okay, now that's in the case where there's just one number which is under the square root sign by itself in the denominator. If you have a case, for example, where you have something like, say we have 2 minus root 3, and on the top say we have 5 over 2 minus root 3, something like this, and we want to rationalize the denominator here, then what you would do is you would take this and you would multiply it by itself except you change the sign between the two terms okay so this is not like the same as this case here uh, you don't multiply by the same thing but you multiply by the thing that's going to make the square root sign disappear and how will it make the square root sign disappear you'll see in a second so if i multiply the denominator by 2 plus root 3 i multiply the new numerator by 2 plus root 3 as well okay now i'm not answering this question by the way right i'm just not at the moment i'm just showing you the principles behind what we're going to do when we answer that question. So why does this rationalize the denominator? It's based upon the difference of squares. Because the denominator now 
if I was to expand this denominator, I'm going to do 2 times 2, which is 4. I'm going to do 2 times root 3, which is plus 2 root 3. And I'm going to do root 3 minus root 3 times 2, which is minus 2 root 3. I have minus root 3 times root 3, which is minus 3. Because it's just, you know, you've got, it's like you're squaring a square root. It's going to cancel just the square root. All right, and the numerator will become, I'll leave it like that for now, 2 plus 5 times 2 plus root 3. See, what happens here is the two, 2 root 3 and the minus 2 root 3 cancel out, and you're left with 5 times 2 plus root 3 over 1. We have rationalized the denominator now. It has is made up of just um, rational numbers. We have rationalized the denominator, okay? So by multiplying it by what's called its conjugate, which is the same terms but the opposite sign between them, you will cause this difference of squares effect where the middle term, which will involve just the square roots, will be cancelled out, okay? So that's the approach we must follow in this question here. We want to rationalize the denominator. We must multiply the denominator and the numerator of this both by the conjugate of this term, which is 2 root 3 minus root 5. The same numbers, but the opposite sign, okay? So that's how we're going to deal with this. So that's a bit of a tutorial on how to rationalize the denominator at the same time which I like my videos to be. Okay, so those of you who's like, oh, I know all that, why are you going on? Just show us the answer. Just go and see the art scheme. What are you doing here? I'm here for those students who need to learn the basics and, uh, you know, to if they have a problem, I'm making these videos for my own reasons. I'm not making my videos for reasons like might be particular to any particular one of you. So, you know, if you find that I'm taking too long explaining, no problem, just go and find a mark scheme or find a talking mark scheme, no problem. I want to make sure my students understand the foundations of what we're doing. So we have 2 root 3 plus root 5 multiplied by 2 root 3 minus root 5. Now be very careful in your writing. Sometimes my 5 and my 3s look the same, and what happens in the end, you start messing up and you, 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 know, you think they're the same thing and then you mess up at the end. So be very careful to write neatly. I know I have a problem with that as many of you have pointed out, but, you know, just try your best. So now, if I multiply the denominator by 2 root 3 minus root 5, I must do the same to the numerator. Now, please write this in brackets, okay? Don't, like some people, what they do is this, and I'll just show you. I'll show you, one second, let me just finish this properly. This is 2 root 3 minus root 5. So whatever I multiply the denominator by, I multiply the numerator by the same thing, so that what comes next is, is the same fraction, same value. Okay, so what some people do here, by the way, which I, I want you to avoid, is they will write 8 minus root 15, like this, without a bracket. So that, what that actually means, you're not multiplying the 8 with any of these terms. You're just multiplying, you have 8 on its own, then you multiply root 15, minus root 15 by this term, and minus root 15 times that term, and that's wrong. So even if you write it like this and you do the right thing, it's still wrong to write it like this, because this is, does not mean you have to multiply both of those, terms by these terms. It means only the minus root 15. So please, that must go in a bracket when you write it down in this next step. Very important. Okay, so now, so I'm just going by the things I see written down by my students, um, a common kind of um, errors and stuff, just so that we all learn from those. Okay, so now, the next step is for us to expand the bracket. So for the numerator, you have 8 times 2 root 3, which is going to be 16 times root 3. Okay, then you have 8 times minus root 5, which is minus 8 times root 5. Now I'm going to multiply these together. I'm going to write them first like this, and then we'll uh, sort it out afterwards. So you have minus root 15 times 2 root 3. I'll write it as minus 2 root 3 times root 15 for now. Okay, and minus root 15 times minus root 5. That's going to be positive, and as I said, I'll write it as root 15 times root 5 for now. I'll write it like this for now. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to make sure that my... Writing is clear, that's a root 5. Okay, root 5. Okay, and that's all over. Now, because of what I mentioned here, when you multiply these together, it's like, what do you see happen? The first term is squared, the last term is squared, and there's a minus in front of it, right? And the middle term disappears. So when you are going to expand this, you can just show that. You can show that you squared the first term, so I'll write it as... 2 root 3 squared, I'll write it like that, minus, and you square the last term, which is root 5 squared. So you always put a minus between them. The middle term disappears. You only have this squared minus this squared. There's no middle term because of this difference of squares business that we talked about. 
So now we can try to start simplifying. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm not, I could multiply 3 by root 45 by root 15 and get root 45 and then simplify it. I could do the same with this. I could do root 15 times 5, which is root 75, and then simplify it. Or I could do something that makes life a bit easier, which I prefer to do. These are fine, but I can think of root 15 as root 3 times root 5. So I'll just write it like that for now. So this is 2 root 3. I'm going to split this up into root 3 times root 5. Why? Because I know that these root 3s will combine together to give me 3. And this, same thing, I can write this as root 3 times root 5. And then I've got a root 5 at the end. This is root 3 times root 5. That's root 15. All over. And then I can start simplifying this. Now 2 squared is 4. Root 3 squared is 3. And minus root 5 squared is going to give me 5. Okay, so that gives me this. So now let's try to simplify a bit more. Um, this is fine, 16 root 3 minus 8 root 5. Now this will give me minus, I have 2 times 3. I'll just write step by step so you see. Root 3 times root 3 is going to be 3. So I have 2 times root 3 times root 5 plus and root 3 times root, uh, sorry, root 5 times root 5 is going to give me 5. So this will be like root 3 times 5, which is going to be um, 5 root 3. Okay, root 5 times root 5 is going to give me 5. So that's 5 root 3 all over. This is 12 minus 5, which is 7. So now we can see we have 16 root 3 plus 5 root 3. That's 21 root 3. And we have minus 8 root 5. And this is going to be um, minus 6 root 5. This is going to give you minus 6 root 5 because you have root minus 2 times minus 3. Minus 8 minus 6 is minus 14. They're like, you can think of them as like, like terms. It's like 16x plus 5x, 21x. 16 root 3s plus 5 root 3s, 21 root 3s. Minus 8 root 5s, minus 6 root 5s, minus 14 root 5s. And all of that is over 7. Now that is simplified now. That is, we have rationalized the denominator. However, the question wants us to go a stage further, and they want to write us to write them as two separate terms. So what I can do is, and they've told us that A and B are integers, which if they don't end up as integers, we know we've done something wrong. So now we can just split this into two separate fractions. I have 21 times root 3 over 7 minus 14 root 3 over 7. I split them into two separate fractions, and as we can see, 21 over 7 is 3. So you have 3 root 3 minus 14 divided by 2, 7 is 2, minus 2 root 5. See what I did there at the end? So you can be very careful. It was very ambiguous how I wrote that 5. Be very careful not to make that mistake, because then you might think it is a root 5, and then you might just add them together. So be careful. Well, we should, we should see from the answer we have to have a root 3 and a root 5. So, so far, everything looks good. We have integers. We have a root 3, we have a root 5, but if you want to make sure that you've done the right thing, you can take your calculator and you can check. You can say, okay, let's put a fraction, 8 minus root 15 divided by 2 root 3. Okay, put a space so you can put the plus without the square root in there, and then root 5, plus root 5. Right, if I put that in my calculator, it will give me the answer. Minus 2 root 5 plus 3 root 3. Okay, and what did we get? We got um, 3 root 3 minus 2 root 5. Same thing, just the other way around, that's right. Minus 2 root 5 plus 3 root 3, and there is our answer. There is our answer. And now for part B. It says, hence or otherwise, solve this equation x plus 5 root 3 times root 5 equals 40 minus 2 root 3. So this is the result that we had from part A. Whenever you see the word hence, okay, it means using what we just did. So that's what we just did. That's what we just showed, right? Now, can we use this directly at the beginning of this question? It doesn't look like it, all right? It doesn't look like it, all right? There's also otherwise, meaning there are otherwise... There are other ways that you can solve it. You can solve it without using what we did in the first part. Although normally, the hence part is normally the easiest way of doing it, right? Anyway, so it looks like in the beginning, we can't really use what we did in part A. So let's just go ahead and solve it as we normally would. Now, somebody would look at this and get confused. What's all this roots everywhere? How am I going to solve this equation? Well, there's no difference between solving this equation. It could be, for example, x plus 5 times, you know, 7. 
equals like you know 20 minus 7x or 3x or something like that there's no difference between solving an equation like this and an equation, equation like that in terms of the process that you must go through the only difference is that you have these square roots in third form things that we have to deal with but in general how would we solve something like this okay we would think okay it's a linear equation this is a linear equation the x has only got to the power of one right you don't have x squared you don't have x cubed you don't have x in the denominators it's just a linear equation a simple linear equation with a bit of a bracket there that's all so what do we do first here we expand the brackets so 7x plus 35 equals 20 minus 7x and then we bring the x's together on one side of the equation and the and the number terms on the other side and then we solve so we we go about it in exactly the same method don't get confused by way, the way something looks just think about the principles behind what you know in solving equations so this is a linear equation we want to separate the x terms and the y terms this x term is trapped inside the bracket we need to expand the bracket to release it so you have to do root 5 times both of these terms so root 5 times x is x root 5 it's much better to write that than to write root 5x because sometimes it's ambiguous is the x included under the square root is it not here it makes it totally clear it's not so x times root 5 plus we're going to have 5 times root 3 times root 5, which is 5 times root 15. Equals, and here we have 40 minus 2x times root 3. Now, let's combine the like terms. So, x terms on one side. So, x root 5 plus 2x root 3. Add 2x root 3 to both sides. And subtract 15 root 50, 5 root 15 from both sides. So, you end up with 40 minus 5 times root 15. Okay. Now what we can do is we can um, we want the x terms to be separate. We're going to, we're going to combine these two x terms together. Now <laughs> they're not like terms in terms of you don't have like you know three uh, x plus two x for example, um, and you don't have like root five and a root five as well. But what we can do is we can to make one x term we can take the x as a common factor of these two terms, leaving us with root five plus two root three equals forty minus five root 15 now when i now i want to find x i'm going to divide both sides by this so i have x equals 40 minus 5 times root 15 all over root 5 plus 2 root 3 now we have to simplify this and um to give the answer in its simplest form rationalize the denominator and i think that's where part a was going to come in so let's take the answer for part a and just bring it down so we can compare them so we have the same thing in the denominator i'll just rewrite it so it looks the same the denominator is basically the same as this just written the other way around so you have two times root three plus root five and the numerator if we take out five as a common factor from the numerator you'll end up with five times eight minus root 15. so we have x equals this so it's almost the same thing as what we have there the only difference is it's five times bigger so it's like five times what we have here so it's gonna be five times because this is the same as this all right this as you can see this is the same as this so that means it must be equal to to that so i can replace it i can replace it with this is where the hence comes in i can instead of having to rationalize it all over again i can use that result that we already found from part a replace this with 3 root 3 minus 2 root 5. So we end up with 15 root 3 minus 10 root 5. You can leave it like that if you want. You can leave it like that. That's both fine. But that is the answer then to this question. All right, so we have used our answer to part A, the hence part, right at the end here. When we, when, when we, simply, when we rationalize the denominator. Okay, you could have gone and rationalized it all over again in which case it would be wasting your time. So using the hence way is normally the easiest thing to do. So there we have the answer to part B of question number three. Uh, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section here. Other questions from the topic of third form and simplifying thirds in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And here a video will take you to... Um, or the link will take you to a video that tells you how to use my channel to find things that you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.